All right, so one of my viewers asked me about a couple dimensions on this thing, if I could provide any more details, and I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to give back the machinist world, if you if you will. Um, I mean, it's pretty straightforward if you wanted to make one of these, and it, it has two uh, taper roller bearings in it, and pretty simple. It's just a, a spindle that is bored out to accept a 3 8 threaded rod down through it. It has a number two Morse taper and it has a spacer and a nut. And that's pretty much it. So what I did, recreate this entire piece inside uh, Fusion 360. So we'll take a look at that. All right, let's go ahead and kick this off right. I got a couple parts off McMaster car. The reason for that, so that we can match something um, that you could get right off the shelf. You could buy it and get get started. These are the, the three things that I used off McMaster. A pulley, just as a generic, think of it like a placeholder. And this pulley could be whatever you need it. These taper roller bearings, you don't have to stay with, with the set numbers. This entire thing I modeled with these three off-the-shelf parts. It's really just a, a spindle cartridge. That's this entire setup. If you're curious and you really wanted to go out and buy these, the McMaster uh, part number for the bearings, they're the exact same. 5709K81. Uh, I think they're like 15, 20 bucks, something like that. But this is our starting point. This tells us exactly what uh, OD on our spindle needs to be. It tells us the ID, what we need on the spindle cartridge. So let's just jump from working our way inside out. We've got the spindle, and I'm not gonna give you all the dimensions right here because what I've done is I've made a bunch of PDFs, and you're free to download those. Hopefully this works, I've never done this before putting the files out there with the accessibility but I've got all these dimensions they're not hard fast numbers to go by I didn't go outside and measure my exact vertical uh, head so these are just kind of rough numbers to go off of OD is uh, one inch and to create this spindle you're gonna have to probably find yourself an inch and a half and that's for the spindle nose this nose presses against the bearing it needs to be bored out to accept a 3 8 threaded rod and it has a number two morse taper so there's the the number two morse taper inside that check machinery's handbook from there uh, we've got a section here at the back that's threaded it's a one inch and I just modeled this up for 18 threads per inch. I think that's the fine thread pitch on a one inch. We've got a spacer, and that spacer is nothing more than, a, think of it like a sleeve. And we have a captive nut. So the nose and the nut, those two things sandwich the entire thing together. And it's pressing inside of this housing. So let's take a look at that housing real quick. So you can see that the bearings rest, the bearing cups rest on the bottom here on both ends. So you would just need to set this up, board out to the correct dimension of your bearing cup, and you could set those down in there. On my uh, vertical head, this section is much larger than the actual diameter of the spindle and you can see that here and that is exactly the way it is on my vertical mill um, there's just empty space in there it's no big deal at all the last two items are a top and bottom cap the caps are the exact same so we'll take a look at those real quick and you can see it just has a a little boss on the end and that's just to help kind of seat it down inside the uh, the housing that's about it 
So very simple design, very easy to put together. You might be saying, hey, what about the horizontal section for this, this setup? Yeah, I didn't put it in there. I'm assuming that if you know how to weld, you would just stick a, a piece on there and bore it out to the, the size that you need. I also took a direction, what if you didn't own a welder, like myself, and you wanted to still create something like this, you could very easily make it out of a block. So in this case, here's the block, and I do have the, the section that would fit onto the horizontal overarm and the interior dimensions of this block are exactly identical to the uh, cylindrical version so let's take a look at that again you can see uh, top and bottom exact same as the cylinder no difference. So one's a block and one's a cylinder. You could make it up if you don't own a welder. You can't have an excuse to say you don't know what you're doing. I hope you found this helpful. Um, if you do download it, you know, just, I'm not asking for money. I'm not asking you to pay me. All I'm asking for is just a thumbs up or a thank you. That's all I ask. And I've got all of it here. You can download it. I'm also going to try to include the um, 3D files. And I'll provide that in, uh, I think it's, well, you'll see it. Take a look at it. I don't know how long I'm going to leave this up uh, for download because I've never done something like that. And if it gets stupid, eh, I'll just get rid of it. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you.